Markets can be optimistic on China. Those are the words of my next guest, Rob Dobson of Market, as China's manufacturing PMI reading hits an 18-month high. Rob, thanks for joining us here at Dukascopy TV. Firstly, can you walk us through the fundamentals of today's figure? Yes, um, today's China PMI is showing a, a robust start to the third quarter of the year. Uh, PMI is at a one-and-a-half-year high. It's also showing that there's uh, been an acceleration in the rates of growth in both output and new orders, which are good for both current conditions and for the outlook for the rest of the third quarter. Uh, I think particularly pleasing is that this isn't coming from just one particular area. What we're seeing is we're seeing a pickup from, from the domestic market, uh, suggesting that China economy as a whole is strengthening. And also what we're seeing is the pickup in export orders as well. So a nice firm base. And what that's doing is recently we've seen uh, a lot of job cuts in the manufacturing sector in China. But what we've seen is the pace of job losses actually ease off. So overall, a good, robust picture at the start of the third quarter. Government stimulus measures are considered to be supporting growth within the Chinese economy. Today's report states that HSBC expects policymakers to maintain their accommodative stance over the next few months to consolidate the recovery. In your view, could further stimulus be required? Obviously, if uh, some of the uh, rising tensions we're seeing, you know, geopolitical tension and things like that, do start to hit the uh, global economy and some of the key markets for China and their exports, then that then food stimulus might be necessary. However, at the present moment, the uh, accommodative stance being just maintained seems to be the most likely outcome. What we saw in the first quarter was uh, China GDP rising by 7.4%, Q2 likely 7.5%, and then these data are suggesting a growth pickup at the beginning of the third quarter, which puts China pretty much bang on target to meet its 7.5% uh, uh, growth target for the year as a whole. So at the moment, I would say accommodative stance being maintained. If any headwinds come in, then maybe the option of a uh, extending that uh, accommodative stance could happen. In market response then, Rob, metal shares have gained. Aussie dollar has also seen a lift. Is this indicative of how important the China story continues to be? Yes, China's moved from being um, really a, a medium-sized economy to now the second largest national economy in the world. So it's very much uh, intertwined in the whole global supply chain. So it's very important, and that's going to have a, a knock-on effect for... Uh, China economic data on uh, commodity prices, such as copper, as you mentioned, but also those currencies which are very closely linked to commodities, such as the uh, Aussie dollar. So, yes, yeah, China's become a very, very key player in the global market and is likely to uh, continue to expand that role in the years ahead. Naturally, this is only the preliminary reading, but if we're looking at broader trend lines, can markets be optimistic for Q3? It is looking... Uh, from what we're seeing at the beginning of the third quarter, that they can be pretty optimistic for the uh, quarter as a whole. Uh, as uh, today's figures have shown, China's seeing accelerated growth of both uh, total new orders to its manufacturing sector and also export orders coming into its manufacturing sector as well. And what we normally see when those uh, two particular indicators rise is that's uh, very positive for the uh, outlook for output in the months ahead. So Q3 is looking uh, pretty positive probably uh, seeing the um, rate of growth on an annual basis a little higher than the 7.5% we saw in Q2. Rob, many thanks. Coming up today, Monica Gibson will be taking a look at Argentina, but from me, it's goodbye for now.